Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello there and welcome to this week's edition of the weekend show on Global Vision TV, GV247.TV. We really want to welcome you. Uh, my husband Stuart and I, as you know, we're both secular filmmakers and we've produced a number of Christian programmes, which is what we're here to talk about. So first of all, we'd just like to thank you again for all your emails, letters of encouragement. And I want to say a special hello to Barbara Midrash. You know who you are. Hello. Uh, we just love the thought that you're sitting down to your evening meal whilst you're watching this and that you feel part of the GV247 family. And that really means such a lot to Stuart and I. We really feel like we know you too. So for the rest of you out there, please subscribe. You can hit the, the yellow button down below here and become part of the family. Find out what we're doing. And remember, please send us in your suggestions uh, for any programmes that we can make. And take a look. We've got about 600 other programs on 22 channels here at the moment. If you've got a question you want to ask, it may well already have been answered. So the last few weeks we've been looking at um, a documentary we made about Bible prophecy. It was for television. It's out on DVD now. And we found that as time went on, there would be a number of people who weren't really interested in documentaries. So we felt led of the Lord to make a feature film, a movie, and it's called The Daniel Connection. And um, that came out in 2015. However, the making of it started many years before. There was a there's a lot of funny little stories attached to it. We're going to share some of them with you this week. Um, Stuart, what do you say? Well, before we get going on this program, what I would like to say is that before Deborah and I came to a knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we were both searching for answers. Why are we here? Is there a meaning to life? In due course, we were directed to the Bible as having the answers. Neither of us were looking for religion or to be a part of any spiritual organisation. We were not looking for a crutch to lean on or uh, we were not looking to live forever. We just wanted to know, are we here by chance or by design? Is there any meaning to life as opposed to just survival? Finding the answers in the Bible, which would then lead us to a living relationship with the God of the Bible, we began to research its topics, resulting in years of study and travel. We became passionate, like many others, to share our findings with people. In the early days of our Christian journey, we belonged to or worked with various Christian ministries that had a passion to reach out to the lost. And we would share with people films like the Jesus Film Project, However, over the years, we have seen so many barriers to the gospel, such as misleading documentaries and newspaper articles and books written by disaffected individuals. Yet, tragically, many of those barriers are ones that the church has put there itself. False doctrines leading to cults and terrible physical and spiritual abuse. False teaching through money-grabbing tele-evangelists shepherds or ministers, church leaders who are given the, the task to care for and teach the flock, but abrogating their responsibilities, leaving the flock without correct doctrinal direction. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we have reached out to people from just about every walk of life, always ready to help and to discuss issues that were a stumbling block to them. Yeah. And so our passion has always been to reach the lost by all means, without compromising biblical instruction, to try and open a door to at least create discussion. Film showings were a popular way of reaching people, and we used these to get people to talk and discuss biblical topics. And so while we have many films on GB247 that cover the basics of the gospel and on to deeper instruction in the word, we also use a range of means to provoke dialogue. And that is why we made Cup of Trembling back in the 90s and the TV documentary, The Daniel Project. But as Deborah said earlier, not everyone likes documentaries. And so, The Daniel Connection, Deborah. 
Yeah, you know, pop culture today um, includes many movies with uh, subjects like aliens, for example, and uh, all kinds of conspiracy theories uh, taking over by big brother and governmental institutions and so on. And we decided to bring some of these into the movie format because many of them tie in with biblical prophecy. Now, not all. We have to be able to make a clear dividing line between what is in fact theory and conspiracies and what is the truth that's in the Bible. But let's lighten it a little bit. How about we have a look at one of the first trailers that we made for The Daniel Connection? And this was a trailer that uh, Deborah needed to go to the Cannes Film Festival because we had to create interest. And so this is the, the first trailer that we made. What's all this? I've been looking at it on the internet about these FEMA camps. Concentration camps. Yeah, well, Caller, we could debate these... that subject until the cows come home, but really I don't think it's going to make any difference. This is Danny Mac, and you're listening to The Danny Mac Show on Late Night Radio Free Broadcast. So we found that uh, even though people, some people wouldn't really enjoy a documentary, there are uh, family and friends who've maybe even kind of badgered them into watching it. And something marvellous has happened as a result of that. And we've had many emails over the years of people who've actually come to a living faith in God through Jesus Christ because of the Daniel Project. So to reach those, as we said before, who wouldn't watch a documentary, we really felt led to make this movie. So we had a premiere, a world premiere, and that was quite exciting. I think we maybe have a little clip of it here. Well, before we do, before we watch that clip, mm -hmm. Dara, you, you were talking about you know, people being badgered to watch the Daniel Project documentary. Mm. And from, from there, they go to the Bible. There, they, they wanted to know about... Yeah about God because things had a reality now that they just didn't see before within Christianity. Mm -hmm. And again, the reason we made the Daniel Project film was to point to the documentary. And I've got a wee quote here from somebody, uh, a young man who wouldn't watch documentaries. And this is, this is, this is the kind of thing that we would get. Yeah. I know all about those topics covered in the film. But this sent a chill down my spine because it felt more real than the Hollywood blockbuster productions I watch. I felt it was warning me of a real and present danger. I'm meeting my friend who brought me here, that was at the cinema, for a coffee to talk about all of this. And I've got this Daniel Project DVD to watch. Uh, on a number of these cinema showings, Daniel projects were given, hundreds of Daniel projects mm. were given to people as they left the cinema. And um, as you said, we've got a wee clip here from the premiere night. to see is a dystopian thriller. It is fictional, but it is based 
on a television documentary that we made three years ago called The Daniel Project. Good evening and welcome to The Daniel Connection. <laughs> We were all warned, but few listened. As Earth's population passed seven billion souls in a climate of global disasters, civil wars, and We were all warned, but few listened. As Earth's population passed seven billion souls in a climate of global disasters, civil wars, and international military tension, nations sought to control the planet's dwindling resources. World governments introduced legislation to track and control the people, often bringing false charges against those who would call them to account. It is claimed that ancient Bible prophecies warned about this time, a series of events that would change our world forever. Tonight's show, we're talking about UFOs, biometric implants, religious wars, and who exactly is the Federal Protection Force protecting? Danny Makovich, Detective Inspector Brian Farrell. Can I ask a few questions? How'd you know I was here? We're tracked through our credit cards, mobile phones, computers, and now you're telling us to get ready for biometric chip implants? Isn't that taking things a little bit too far? Danny, listen. If people have done nothing wrong, they have nothing to fear. If the bio-implant can house an economic market system, that could be the mark. And without it, you'd be an outskirt of society, an outcast. We have been watching you, Maria. Who are you? What do you want? It's a detention centre. People need to know about this. They have to understand what's been happening. Illegal immigrants. Subversives. Listen to this. These were the sons of God who were attracted to women on Earth. They've already come. They're not our friends, Danny. Why is everyone so frightened by what they don't understand? I'm sending you this encrypted key. It's a list of people they have chosen. Trust no one. Danny, you have to come with me. What? I'm under Danny? arrest? I'll explain everything in the car. Are you for real? I'm burying my best friend. I just don't believe this was an accident. Well, in that case, we both better be very careful. Yeah. Highly enjoyable, educational. Very thought-provoking. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was amazing. Okay. Well, it's easy to see how it could be like that. Right. So, yeah. Brilliant. Well Cheers. Really interesting. Good. It's well. very good. Thank you very much. Yes. I think it was great, yeah. Um, it's good to see a film that brings light to an important issue. Yeah, it's quite, uh, quite often ignored. Riveting, riveting. Oh, oh no, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, she's good. Really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. brilliant. That's good. Great. Absolutely phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. That's great, great, great stuff. Uh, the sound quality is brilliant. And the filming and the storyline. Brilliant. 100%. Absolutely great. Quite gripping, actually. Yeah, great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Gripping. I like that. Yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great. It was great. You can't go away and. Not think about it. it was a really important message. Oh, good, so, good. Yeah, yeah. like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It makes it makes you think a lot. Brilliant. I did really enjoy it. I can't wait to expect it to to happen all the way through from the beginning. You know. Now, now I need a biochip. <laughs> I mean, I was so indulged in it. Right. Uh -huh. I was so dying on this film coming out. Nice yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So you enjoyed it? Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Did very much. Brilliant. Really Enjoy the film. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Just feel that you feel there's a need within you to not just sit on what you've, you've seen. Right. Very good. Just, yeah, go out there and tell people the film. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Going to watch the documentary. Maybe not tonight. Uh, right. Tomorrow night. Hopefully, so. Brilliant. Any favourite bits or all of them? Very good. Really well done, though. Oh, thank really well. you. Thank you. Really enjoyed thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. I'll wait home now to sort of digest it. It's going to take a while to. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but no, it's very good. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for the film. Brilliant. Give me the heebie jeebies. Heebie jeebies, I like that. Yeah. 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 Yes, I did. Very much, actually. Yes. Scary. Was there any bit that you really, really enjoyed or stuck, stuck out for you? Or I found it quite an anxious film. Oh. 
I mean, I really felt my stomach churning, my heart on the edge of my seat a little bit. And I've read quite a bit about the technology um, over the years. Right, okay. So okay. It was still, it's still more intense than I thought it would be. Right. Oh, wow, thank you. Let's get the FTP going. Hi, did you enjoy the film? I did very much. So, where did it all begin? Well, we have had ideas buzzing about in our heads for many years. Um, I almost believe the Lord was giving us visions quite seriously, a concept, an idea of how this could be made. Well, but we, physically, we were, we were going to make the film first mm -hmm. back round about 2002 yep. before the documentary. <laughs> but it didn't work out that way. Nope, it certainly didn't. It wasn't God's timing, I reckon. <laughs> but physically, how it began was this. That it, we can blame it on curry. Now, Stuart and I absolutely love to eat curry. And he wanted to learn how to make it uh, authentically. So, as a very wise wife, I bought my husband um, some cookery lessons. So there's a tip for you ladies out there. Get your husband cookery lessons. But this entailed quite a travel and uh, he wanted me to come with him, bless him, and we stayed in a little country inn. While we were having our lunch, the owner came up and sat down and chatted with us. And he asked us what we did and we told him that we were discussing a possible film project. The owner was wonderful. He was really helpful to us. He asked us to jump in his car and he drove us around all the estate. He, yeah. he owned a huge amount of land. Um, he took us to a large industrial complex where we shot the prison scenes. Uh, we had private roads which were fabulous for car chases. There were forests where, again, we had more chases. Uh, we also had a small mansion house. That was lovely to be able to use that. And the bean in itself, where we would eventually shoot a scene with Danny Makovic, played by Morgan Carberry, and Detective Inspector Brian Farrell. Um, and that was Grey O'Brien. And suddenly we got a thrill in our spirits and we knew that the Lord was showing us these were ideal locations where we could actually make the film we'd been speaking about. Yeah, they, know, were, they, were, they were in such close proximity uh, to each other that mm -hmm. uh, from a production perspective, it was just great news. It really was. Um, and I would return there with uh, one of our crew, Andy Graham, to take uh, location picks, working out what was required in the way of mechanical devices such as dolly tracking and camera cranes, generators and lighting equipment. Mm -hmm. And the factory would actually need to close down for a weekend uh, so it could be refashioned to suit our intended scenes. Mm -hmm. But really for us to be provided with our locations all in one place oh, it was astonishing. Yeah. Because as Stuart said, you know, we, you can pay location finders vast sums of money to take a long time to come up with this. It was amazing. And then there was another place, Stuart, wasn't there, when you went um, with Andy to... Uh, down to his place and here you found that his dad owned loads of woodlands as well well we went down there Andy was uh, he was building various uh, mechanical devices so that the camera would would move on these devices and uh, he lives in Lanark and um, when I got there I noticed that there was the, the this woodland mm -hmm. and we, we went for a walk and uh, I said Andy, this would be great for filming for our chase scene in the forest. And um, he said, well, you know, let's ask my, my father. And, and we did. And uh, he was all for it. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is that the, the family, the whole family. Um, they got behind us, didn't they? they it was they amazing. They absolutely got yeah. behind the whole mm -hmm. project. Uh, we're so grateful to the work that they did. Mm -hmm. We had not planned to film for probably at least another nine months. Mm. Now, with the opening at the Bean Inn, uh, whereby we were uh, given access to all these different locations, we thought we'll have time to plan all this through because it takes tremendous planning. Yeah. Uh, lots of permissions, health and safety meetings, insurance, legal uh, agencies. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a huge undertaking. So we thought we had time. So when I was in this uh, woodland uh, with Andy and his father, 
uh, we were just chatting and he said, Stuart, you can you can use the woodland, it will, uh, whatever you want to do. The big problem was that they were actually going to cut the forest down. So filming had to start something mm -hmm. like within a month. OK, what we're doing here is we're uh, we're in a woodland area just near Lanark and the guys are, 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 are cutting a track so that we can dolly track across this uh, pond behind me and it's really marshy so they're they're having to uh, put pegs into the ground and uh, make sure that the dolly's not going to sink when we all get on there so uh, okay what are we doing boss what's well, happening first thing being obviously you pick the line of the the shot is going to be past the swamp so we're going from a point here where, before we hit water again mm -hmm. and then two lengths of track over to there that particular line which you've chosen which will take you by the tree stumps and give you shots of the water right the support principle is basically making up wee sets of goal posts small goal posts and a wee thin rail that allow the, the sleepers of the main rail to sit on right and then we can put the bogey on and move over okay so that's the basic principle um, a bit worried with this boggy ground right enough. I mean, we've only got pegs of two feet, you know, at the moment. And, you know, depending on how far down we need to go yeah. to make them stable. Yeah. We'll just need to suck it and see. We'll, we'll, we'll. So apart from all that, you still had to decide on your camera system. Yeah, we were looking at camera systems. And, and once again, because it's for cinema, these are very specialist cameras. They're very expensive. They're complex. And, um, but we had to travel to London and, of course, that was under the guise of... Yeah, it was meant to be our wedding anniversary. Or was it my birthday? I can't remember. It was our wedding anniversary. It was our wedding anniversary. But, but while we were there, we picked up some great lenses for the camera. <laughs> All I remember was the tens of thousands of pounds you were having to pay out. So, so we thought, how on earth are we going to manage to do this? But it was amazing because work would come in that would enable us to pay for each stage as we went along. It was it was amazing, God's provision. Yeah. But there were adventures when you were filming down there in the forest, weren't there? Eradication of religious fundamentalist groups now became a priority. We were given intelligence about a cell. We were told there were suicide bombers, viral infection carriers, obstacles to human evolution. I gave the order to apprehend and detain them. Prophet then predictably alluded to something where people would become so We were instructed to apprehend their leader, a retired Christian pastor. Intelligence said he preached a literal approach to biblical interpretation. This made him a fundamentalist, a danger to society. Know why you're here? I don't know why I'm here. You burst down our door, brutalized my folks, frightened the children, the women, we have a bell in the door, you know. You've been arrested for subversive behaviour, preaching radical religious propaganda. What we were doing when you... Gate crashed my little cottage was simply having a time of Bible study and a time of fellowship. Yes, brainwashing people with your extremism. That's not true. The Bible is an open book. It's not imposing on anybody. It's a book of hatred and bigotry. There's not a shred of evidence to suggest that we're either subversive, that we're bigots, or that we're filled with hate. The central theme of the Bible, as we've said, is the fact that Christ died. Why did he die? Not only because he loved us, but that his Christian people would exhibit love to others. Where's the love spread by religious extremists carrying out bomb attacks? All in the name of God. It's an insult. To make that an illustration of Christianity. So, in future programmes, we're actually going to be looking at some of the theology behind the Daniel connection. You know, we actually involved Bible expositors and Bible teachers and scholars to be able to get accuracy um, in some of these unusual uh, subjects we're touching on, for example, uh, UFOs and so on. We don't want to give away too much of the, the film theme itself, but uh, I think you'll find it interesting because we're able to give an explanation as to why the script was written the way it was. 
And of course, it was really necessary for Stuart to get footage together to make a trailer so that I could go to the Cannes Film Festival and um, go looking for talent, as we call it. We needed to have uh, a male and female star. And uh, we already had somebody in mind for playing, actually, the main role, Danny Makovic. And um, as an actress, we're going to tell you all about that next week because they, um, all the, the auditions, for example, they were fun in themselves. But talking of fun, while they were filming in the forest, it was like a Laurel and Hardy film at some point. So there you go. Uh, you got to hand it to those guys because that water was really cold and it was really muddy. And all in all, it, it was quite unpleasant at times working in those conditions. And next week, we're going to be looking at conditions that in some ways were even worse than that. And sadly, a terrible accident. Deborah. Well, what can we say? On those words, we have to love you and leave you. I just remind you of the little cards you can send away to us for um, telling people about this channel, GV247, space to write your own message on the back. So we do look forward to you joining us next week at the same time. Yeah. So from Stuart and I, bye-bye. God bless. This is GV247.tv, a non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on gv247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years. And if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch.